Hello and welcome to another Performance Architects webinar snippet. These snippets include excerpts of webinars that are accessible by going to our website at www.performancearchitects.com and registering for our Learning Center, a community and forum for on-demand business education in the business intelligence and enterprise performance management arenas and related topics. Performance Architects is a business and technology consulting company that helps companies initiate and sustain big changes in their performance management and business intelligence environments and processes. Head over to our channel after this video or come back in the future to learn best practices, hear overviews, and take part in lessons we have designed to help you. We're focused on continuing to develop this community and we welcome any recommendations you might have for future content. Thanks and enjoy. So to use a good definition we saw from Hugh, Hugh Watson, um, it includes a broad category of applications, technologies, and processes for gathering, storing, accessing, and analyzing data to help business users make better decisions. So really what we like to say to people is it's the process of turning data into information and turning that into knowledge. And you can pursue several different types of, of reporting and analysis in one BI solution. And we, we really like Colin White's uh, sort of breakdown of strategic, tactical, and operational BI, because each one of them is very, very important to your organization. And although you may have a software platform that provides all of these functions, you may or may not be able to do this all in one project. And it's something you very much need to think about as you structure and get started with this kind of work. So first of all, strategic. That's really your executive team looking out 24 months and beyond to strategy and where you want the organization to go. Usually, this is based on historical data because you're obviously not pulling real-time information in to impact your strategy. There's also tactical. And this is really midterm goals. It's your budget and a little bit of your forecast, you know, 12 to 18 months out, maybe 24 months out. And this includes people who are both senior managers, business analysts, and the line of business managers managing your day-to-day -day work. Now, interestingly, this is also oftentimes historical data because people are building last year's budget or this year's budget off last year's plans. Um, so very interestingly, you really don't get into as real-time data until you get into operational analysis. So optimizing daily operations. And this is really usually the people who are really executing on your strategic and tactical plans. Not all business intelligence solutions, like I mentioned earlier, can handle both huge volumes of operational data as well as doing that very sophisticated historical analysis that needs to take place for forecasting. And you really just need to keep that in mind as you get started. And very importantly, oftentimes when people think of quote unquote business intelligence, they think of the top layer of the stack, how they're going to access this information, when in actuality, there are multiple systems you need to think about. These include how clean is your tactical transactional data coming from things like your enterprise resource planning, customer resource management or Salesforce automation, and other systems. Do you have data sitting in access databases or spreadsheets that's not in a transactional system? Also, how are you transforming this data and making sure that it's normalized across these systems? And if you're a business person out there and you have no idea what normalization is, that's okay. In layperson's terms, it means, is there a way to relate terms in different systems to make sure that they all tie together. So think about it from the perspective of you know, a sales organization. What's a customer? What's a product? You need to agree on both a glossary of terms for this as well as having a way to extract, transform, and load this data from your various transactional systems into an environment where it's ready to be accessed for analysis. And that's what the data warehouse or data marts do. Now you may see a dotted line around the data warehouse box here on this page. And that's because in our mind, data warehouses and data marts have very similar design. There is a whole religious conversation on that topic, which I'm not going to get into today. But 
suffice to say, there are some considerations you need to take into account in terms of how you're going to organize that data to present it, and you need IT people there to help you think through those. Oftentimes, companies will have taken uh, a database and created applications on top of it that are purpose-built for things like strategy management, forecasting and budgeting, business intelligence or reporting and analysis, and benchmarking and monitoring, getting back to those operational BI applications we were talking about. Those may or may not be well suited to you. Again, you need to understand your needs before you go off and select one of those. And then there's ways to serve and present information. That's either through a browser, which is very common these days, through your desktop, through Microsoft Office or other applications, Google Docs, and other inf various interfaces, whether that's an iPad or whatever. So you really need to take all of this into account when you're talking about BI. So now moving into actually how you structure your initiative. So first of all, just a little bit on the case study we're going to talk about today. This is a company we actually worked with here. They're a business-to-business -business product company that desperately needed to get visibility into sales forecasts versus actual performance in a very, very tight economy. And I'm sure all of us have experienced that the last several years. As a result, the audience was obviously the sales team, both sales people and their managers, the finance and accounting teams who were screaming for those numbers to be able to do that analysis, and obviously the senior management who was asking, what the heck, where are those numbers that the sales people are delivering? Now, the issue for them was that they had information on sales in various systems. So they had a customer resource management system or Salesforce automation system that contained the salespeople's activities as well as a revenue forecast. They had a general ledger that had data around the actual transactions. And they also had, obviously, accounts payable, accounts receivable, other transactional systems related to that. And then their driver-based information was in email and in that unstructured data in the CRM system. They were pulling the forecast together and the probability weighting of that forecast together for revenue in spreadsheets in what they called snapshot reports on a fairly infrequent basis. The reason it was infrequent was because the salespeople felt like their time spent creating those reports kept them out of the field. And as a result of those multiple systems, it was a very time-consuming, very difficult, and pretty inaccurate process. As a result, salespeople had no idea where they stood against achieving their quotas. And vice versa, management really didn't understand how financial performance was going to look at the end of a month or a quarter. And whether you're in a nonprofit or for-profit organization, this is still a very applicable case study. Think about your fundraising and development organizations inside your nonprofit. Or if you're in a product or a service sales organization, this probably rings very true. So the need was to create an environment where people could see information appropriate to their role, so secure role-based access, in a more real-time, accurate, and comprehensive fashion. So that's a pretty standard BI case, by the way. And we see this across multiple functional areas in all different industries. So with this in mind, what we recommend based on many, many experiences over the years is an iterative process to structure a BI initiative. Now, for the customer we're discussing today, we started at the top of the chart, helping them to assess the situation. But ultimately, this is an iterative process. It's a circle for a reason. Unfortunately, you're never going to quote, unquote, finish. And I think there's a great tendency with these kinds of projects, because they are so transformative, that people think they're going to get through the project and they'll be done forever and ever with business <laughs> analysis and reporting. But frankly, you evolve. Your team evolves. Your business and your organization and the market evolves. So therefore, your reporting and analysis system is going to evolve with you. And so you should constantly build in this process, this circular process, to make sure that you're continually meeting the needs of your organization. 